today we are going to continue with the previous chapter of geography that is chapter number 3 humidity and clouds in the previous session we have studied about weather condition evaporation humidity in the air moisture holding capacity of the air absolute humidity and relative humidity in today's session we are going to study about condensation sublimation and clouds in details let us start with condensation the process of changing water vapor in the air into water is called condensation as you can see in the picture that the water is evaporating and is moving up in the atmosphere as the temperature is cool here the water vapor is condensing into drops of water condensation is also called as densification due to the fall in temperature the relative humidity of the air increases this in turn leads to condensation or sublimation condensation of water vapor in the air occurs around the dust particles means in the atmosphere a number of dust particles are present these water droplets goes up and gets accumulated around the dust particles clouds are a form of condensation at higher altitude whereas dew frost and fog are the forms of condensation at ground level as you know that they are formed near the surface of the earth as you can see in the picture dew dew are tiny drops of water that forms on cool surfaces at night when atmospheric vapor condenses as you can see here small drops of water on the leaves these are dew drops the next one is frost frost is a deposit of small white ice crystals formed on the ground or other surfaces when the temperature falls below freezing point the next one is fog fog is a thick cloud of tiny water droplets suspended in the atmosphere or near the earth surface which restricts visibility sublimation the process of changing the water vapor that is gas into solid state that is ice is called sublimation due to the fall in temperature the relative humidity of the air increases and this in turn leads to sublimation dry ice is an example of sublimation as you can see here in this picture the ice is directly getting converted into gas without melting now we'll study about clouds a visible mass of fine particles of water or ice accumulated around the dust particles in the air at high altitude is called the cloud cloud causes snowfall or rainfall on the surface of the earth as we know that in nature the process of evaporation of water takes place because of the heat of the sun the evaporated water goes up in the atmosphere cools and gets accumulated around the dust particles floating in the air these are known as condensation nuclei containing aerosols as the vapor rises and cools this nuclei provide the surface for the vapor to condense when enough vapor condenses around the nuclei a cloud droplet is formed as it is shown in the picture and this cloud droplets measures about 0.5 to 5 mm in diameter do you know why do clouds float in the air condensation occurs around minute particles in the atmosphere condensed water or snow particles in the clouds are very fine and almost weightless so clouds float in the air formation of clouds land and water gets heated because of the heat of the sun air near the land surface heats up rises and become less dense hot air rises up this process is known as evaporation 
as it goes higher the temperature of the air reduces and the moisture holding capacity of the air reduces the water vapor in the atmosphere turns into water and snow this process is called condensation the level of condensation is determined by the water vapor in the air keep in mind that the freezing point is also dependent on the altitude and water vapor because of condensation fine particles of ice and water float in the air at a greater height they accumulate around dust particles in the air and become larger in size and this accumulation together is called a cloud clouds float in the atmosphere because of the vertical flow of the wind like a kite which floats in the air as it moves higher and higher the clouds too float in the atmosphere because of vertical flow specific types of clouds cause rainfall on the earth now we will study in short how clouds were named in 1803 a british chemist luke howard devised a classification system for clouds he gave clouds latin names corresponding to their appearance and altitude firstly he split clouds into three main types cirrus cumulus and stratus he combined cirrus and cumulus together to form cirro cumulus then he combined cumulus and stratus together to form strato cumulus and then cirrus and stratus combined together to form cirro stratus then these three clouds that is cirrus cumulus and stratus combined together to form nimbus stratus alto stratus clouds were formed from stratus clouds as it was formed above the stratus it was named alto stratus in the same way alto cumulus clouds were formed from cumulus clouds but as it was formed above cumulus it was named alto cumulus alto means high and at last cumulus and nimbus stratus together combine and form cumulonimbus now we will study about types of clouds as you can see here in this chart the clouds are classified into high medium and low depending on the altitude these high medium and low clouds are further classified into 10 types depending upon their appearance and their features now we will study them in detail first one is high clouds clouds which form at higher or greater altitude are called high clouds the altitude ranges from 7000 to 14000 meters the types of high clouds are cirrus cirro stratus and cirro cumulus cirro clouds are wispy cirro stratus look like bed sheets having hollow cirro cumulus look like groups of small rays the next is medium clouds their altitude ranges from 2000 meters to 7000 meters the types of medium clouds are alto stratus and alto cumulus alto stratus clouds are thin sun can be seen through these clouds as if seen through a milky glass alto cumulus clouds have layers and wave like structure they are white in color and have gray shade next is low clouds their altitude is less than 2000 meters the type of low clouds are stratocumulus stratus and nimbus stratus stratocumulus have layered and round clusters they are white to earthy in color stratus have layers with uniform base and are gray in color nimbus stratus have thick layers they are gray in color and causes continuous rainfall and even snowfall there are two more clouds whose altitude is variable they are formed between 500 meters to 6000 meters from the surface of the earth they are cumulus and cumulonimbus cumulus clouds are huge dome shaped and gray in color 
whereas cumulonimbus clouds are indicator of thunderstorm, dark in color, dense and look like mountains. We have seen that the clouds are divided into low, medium and high. Now let us study these clouds in detail. Cumulus. These clouds are formed extensively from 500 meters to 6000 meter altitude. Cumulus clouds are fluffy, huge and dome shaped. The top of these clouds are mostly white when lit by the sun although their base is usually dark or grey. They are detached from one another or are scattered throughout the sky. The vertical flow of the air adds to the formation of these clouds. The vertical expanse of these clouds increases so much that they turn into cumulonimbus clouds and bring rain. Cumulus clouds are an indicator of fair or pleasant weather. The second type of low cloud is stratus. Stratus clouds often look like thin white layers or sheet with uniform base. They are ash or grey to nearly white in color. They are the lowest lying clouds. Sometimes they appear at the surface in the form of fog. The third type of low cloud is stratocumulus. It is also called as cumulus stratus. These clouds are characterized by large dark rounded masses usually in groups, lines or waves. Their color vary from bright white to dark grey. They are the most common clouds on earth. They usually have gaps between them but they can also be joined together. The fourth type of low cloud is nimbostratus. Nimbostratus clouds are dark grey and has thick layers of clouds thick enough to block out the sun and produces continuous rainfall or snowfall. The base of a nimbostratus cloud can be found relatively close to the ground but the top of them can extend upward to the middle cloud level. Now we will study about medium clouds. The first one is altostratus. Altostratus clouds are grey or blue-grey. They usually cover the whole sky. The sun is visible through these clouds as if seen through a milky glass. These clouds are comparatively thin. The next type of medium cloud is altocumulus. Altocumulus clouds are in the form of layers. They have wave-like structure. They are white in color and have gray shape. Now we will study about high clouds. The first one is cirrocumulus. Cirrocumulus clouds look like groups of small waves. Cirrus. Cirrus clouds are delicate, feathery or feather-like cloud. They are mostly made of ice crystals. They have a wispy shape comes from wind currents which twist and spread the ice crystals into strands. They generally occur in fair weather condition. The next is cirrostratus. Cirrostratus look like bedsheet with wrinkles. A hollow is generally seen around these clouds. The cloud with variable extent is cumulonimbus. These are characteristic clouds which are indicator of thunderstorm. They look like huge mountains. They are dense and dark in color. There is thunder accompanied by lightning. They bring rain with storm and may sometimes bring hailstones. But such a type of rain does not last long. This is a cumulonimbus cloud. The shape of the cumulonimbus cloud is like an anvil that is flat at the 
top. It has positive charge at the upper layers and negative charge at the lower layer and the ground has positive charges. Due to the difference in these charges, electric charges are being formed and lightning takes place. Lightning of the sky for a movement. Most lightning happens inside the clouds, but sometimes lightning takes place in between the cloud and the ground. Because of the lightning, the air near expands, heats up and expands and this leads to uh, a thunder sound. Both thunder and lightning occur simultaneously, but we observe lightning first and then thunder because light travels much faster than sound waves. Now we will see how the rainfall and hailstone occur in cumulonimbus clouds. As we have studied that, the raindrops of the cumulonimbus clouds are larger in size as compared to the other clouds. This is because when the raindrops start falling down, they are again lifted by the vertical expanse of the air and goes up. When they go up, a layer of water gets accumulated on these raindrops. Again, it starts falling down. Again, because of the vertical expanse of the air, these drops are again lifted upwards and this process is being repeated again and again. And the process is lifted, repeated and the water droplets become larger and larger and they are unable to float in the cloud. So at that time, they fall down in the form of rain. Sometimes the air in the cloud is very cold. As a result, these drops freeze and fall in the form of hail. And this is known as hailstones. Do you know what is cloudburst? Cloudburst is a type of precipitation. Raindrops coming towards the earth are stopped in the clouds itself because of strong vertical winds. These drops change into hail. This makes the clouds heavier. The vertical winds are unable to bear their weight. This leads to heavy rain with large-sized hail. This is called cloudburst. It leads to a rainfall of more than 100 mm in a small area or particular region. This type of precipitation mainly occurs in mountainous region. The state through which the Himalayan ranges pass experience such a type of rainfall. As you can see it here in this video. Thank you.